Hello, everyone. Hello, the standoff. Uh, we are going to have another presentation now from the experts of Trend Micro. Please welcome Vladimir uh, Korobotov and Fyodor Yarechkin. Uh, they will discuss uh, the bulletproof hosting providers and um, investigations of bulletproof hosting providers. Over to our speakers. And I'm Fyodor Yarechkin. And we are senior threat researchers of TrendMicro forward looking threat research team. Part of TrendMicro research. So, and today we will talk about pivoting techniques in investigations of bulletproof hosters. We define underground hosting as any service provided to host companies of infrastructure with a goal of malicious or criminal activity. This is a very broad definition, but it allows us to examine a wide range of underground activities involved in provision criminal infrastructure components. Such services include dedicated servers, virtual private servers, anonymization services like proxies and VPNs, cloud services, and many other things. Based on our research, there's almost no real bulletproof host on the market. What we believe is advertised as bulletproof hosting is in fact a hosting that can handle certain types of abuse requests. It's adapting process by criminals and attempts to move around assets faster than law enforcement or incident response teams or authorities, which could uh, take down hosts within particular geographical location. Many of modern bulletproof hosters, they build their infrastructure cross-nationally, which allows them to move virtual machines from one location to another. The hosting of hacker infrastructure has been an essential component of cybercrime from very early days of the internet. Recently, we published three white papers, which were over 140 pages long in total. The first white paper gives an overview of cyber criminal market and forums where infrastructure is visibly traded. We can talk about this as a front stage. The second paper focuses on the backstage of the types of infrastructure and services used by criminals. The paper is probably most of use for incident response teams, certs, and similar groups. And finally, the short paper focuses on the modus operandi of OPSEC of criminals themselves, how they hide and protect their infrastructure, and in some cases make it almost bulletproof. Each of them in turn, this paper is going to be one of the most used for criminal investigators and law enforcement. All of the papers available online for download, feel free to explore them. Let's look what the front stage look like. Front stage is a market. Let's go to this market and see. When you're talking about front stage or markets, we can highlight several things. So several entities participate on this market. It's sellers who offer their services related to underground hosting. It's buyers, the major customers who use bulletproof hosting uh, to conduct their activity and monetize their skills. It's market demands, so services and prices, what actually buyers are ready to pay for particular service they get. This could be dedicated servers, VPNs, proxies, even some services like DDoS protection. And of course, the major places where the deals are going on. It's forums, it's dedicated shops, it's social and messenger platforms. What are the common types of the machines that we identified during the investigation of bulletproof hosting? So to start with, it's a bulletproof hosting itself. The second, we've seen SOCs, proxies, and other proxy services such as reverse proxies and VPNs, which are available for hire. There are also hijacked or compromised machines, which are sold on the market. There are also free hosting that is frequently abused. Fast flux, like fast flux existed for several years. It evolved and is widely used by bulletproof hosting providers these days. And of course, cloud adoption as Many popular services, cloud is one of the services that is widely adopted by cyber criminals, also in context of bulletproof hosting provision. To find underground hosting services, it is not necessary to go to dark web or deep web. Sometimes it's just enough to Google. So we are Googling here a keyword related to bulletproof hosting. And what we see, the first link 
give us dedicated shop where we can see a variety of prices. And of course, prices depend on the configuration of the machine and the physical location, the type of possible monetization of the host. For some hosts where requirements like no Bitcoin mining or mining, no spam, or you can use it just as a proxy. For other machines, we are more flexible. So any type of use is permitted. So here are the prices in Russian rubles and to get price in US dollars, we should divide it roughly by 70, several dollars, dozen of dollars or $50 per host. Next link is a Russian social media network, VK, which is also known like Russian Facebook. And surprisingly, we can see here advertisement of bulletproof hosting and even samples with credentials of compromised machines. So you can barely see this on the Facebook, on Twitter, but due to freedom of internet in Russia, you can find it in Russian social media networks. The fourth link, give us well-known forum, anti-chat. And here we can see dedicated threads, 35 pages of discussions. And some of the threads are over 100,000 of views and tens or even hundreds of posts. Another important component for underground market, it's uh, messenger platforms. Of course, Telegram and similar platforms uh, I use it to sell and deliver this kind of services and were dedicated groups and chats. Underground actors went farther and we made automation and created bots which capable to sell underground hosting assets automatically. For example, this is one of such bots and it is necessary to send a money to the particular e-wallet and show particular comment or put particular comment to get the services criminals needed. Let's look a little bit at ecosystem of bulletproof hosting. So on this diagram, you can see a quick breakdown of different types of bulletproof hosting services. Some bulletproof hosting services simply resell compromised assets. Other bulletproof hosters, they perform short-term lease with different internet service providers. And of course, there are organizations which maintain and run their own data centers or collocate them with other internet service providers in their data centers. Of course, the cheapest to buy is a bulletproof server that is provided using compromised assets. However, the bulletproof server that is built on compromised assets is not reliable. Most what you can get is money back guarantee that the server will not be down for a certain period of time, or if the server disappears, then they will provision a new server. Of course, this kind of servers are not suitable for putting any of the sensitive data, especially data that might leave traces that could lead to attribution of a particular threat actor. And those servers are usually used for one-off quick tasks. Bulletproof services that are based on short-term lease with ISPs, they uh, simply use other ISP services and the seller usually researches what kind of services or what kind of content is or is not acceptable with a particular hosting provider. And that's normally included as a part of the end user agreement. That kind of services would not provide some of usable features to the bulletproof customer. For example, early notification on receipt of abuse request, and they would also not be able to hold off ISPs from taking down the systems and providing those systems to law enforcement. So those kind of systems could commonly be used for intermediate proxies or other machines that might not contain sensitive information. And finally, there are bulletproof hosters that either run their own data centers or collocate their infrastructure with other ISPs. That kind of bulletproof hosters normally have strong relationship with domestic hosting providers. They might possibly have insiders in hosting companies. They typically can give advance notice if an abuse request is received for a particular host or if an ISP is about to receive a visit from law enforcement. Owners of those machines, they might either be able to physically move machines from one location to another, one country to another, or 
what we've seen in the recent years, to frequently use virtualization platforms and could simply migrate virtual machines from one location to another, often doing this through national borders, which makes it more difficult for law enforcement to trace that kind of machines or acquire images of those machines or take those machines down. Hosting uncompromised assets. It's the place where your infrastructure can participate in criminal activities, even if you don't know what it's happened, or if you are, as a infrastructure owner, never permitted such activities. There are several signs which suggest that uh, services provided on compromised infrastructure instead of legal one. This is very often case uh, for both for short-term hosting, like uh, dedicated servers, VPS, and the same case is for VPN and in our anonymizing services. One of the signs, like on this example, it's 24 or 48 hours warranty, which is not usual for legitimate services where you can rent servers for normally months or years. And our thing, it's a warranty, which suggests that if owner of the asset changed the password. That's not a warranty case, so it's a problem of the buyer because buyer probably was too noisy and owner detected uh, this compromise by himself or herself. Where trends now on the underground, which are related to more effective and more fast uh, monetization of stolen credentials than before. So the term called cloud of logs and means that logs, which are credentials from different sources, are put in the cloud and access to the cloud with hundreds of thousands sources, I mean, compromised machines with millions of passwords are sold to the criminals. And criminals buy in this access and use their best skills to monetize them. And of course, for this, we created a customized tools to do this at scale. So, for example, we know what RDP access and uh, RDP credentials play a very important role on the market. Here you can see a banner from the advertisement from the tool which allow criminals to commit RDP-related activities on monetization at really big scale. It's possible to test particular credentials, it's possible to handle servers, uh, get fingerprints of the system, and many other things. Similar tools are available for many other types of monetizations, for checking validity of credentials for particular services like PayPal, for example, or for Google Cloud or Google accounts, and let's allow criminals and underground actors to commit their activity at scale. Corporate machines with RDP access often monetize it stage by stage, information exfiltration, uh, and when extortion, probably encryption of the network. Machines from private customers participate in the fraud activities to avoid detections of anti-fraud system when criminals using stolen credentials from internet shops or internet payment services or stolen credit cards to buy some goods in the shops or use other type of monetization. Uh, legal and geopolitical aspects of hosting is very important part and that's the place where cat and mouse game is often visible. Criminals are often make use of geopolitical conflicts by put in part of the infrastructure in one country and another part in another country, but makes investigations really hard. So think about physical crime. When crime happened in particular city and criminal and victim are located at the same place. So here criminal can be located in country A, compromised asset located in country B and victim located in country C. So the simplest case for cybercrime investigation already includes three jurisdictions. So free law enforcement should collaborate to investigate this case. In our research, we investigated posts on the underground forum to fulfill kind of map between countries and types of activities which are suitable for criminals. So this is not based on the legal aspects. It's based on the feedback from underground actors what were successfully commit particular activity in particular country or not successful or was unable to commit activity 
effectively. So we can see Y, we can see M, and we can see N. N means no, Y means yes, many criminals succeed with this activity in particular country, and M means maybe, so some criminals succeed and some are not. So we often seen that companies could be registered in some offshore locations, such as Seychelles. However, the company's physical assets, such as servers, could be hosted in other countries, such as Romania, Ukraine, Russia, and so on. This is a very common pattern. And what is the advantage of this kind of cross-border company infrastructure? From the legal point of view, it might makes harder for law enforcement to coordinate the investigation or take down efforts. Also, some law enforcement organizations in particular countries might be a bit slower to respond to requests from the foreign colleagues. And of course, criminals know about this and they actively use this thing in their activity. So let's look into some case studies. We prepared some of the case studies based on our past investigation experience and I would like to share some of them with you. And we hope that this information will help you to investigate the cases which you are working on and protect your infrastructures better. Indeed. The first case we'd like to look into is a series of activities that many of external trade resources groups label as Mangicar. In short, uh, those activities were involving breaking into websites, injecting normally a piece of JavaScript code, which would be hosted on a hacker-owned machine. That piece of JavaScript code would exfiltrate information, such as credit card information or other payment details. So on the slide, uh, you can see one of the domain names used by uh, Magikar that we identified, so monitoring of our telemetry. If we simply look into a passive DNS mapping, we could see simply a domain name that is mapped to different IP addresses during different periods of time. However, if we convert this thing into autonomous system attribution, we could actually see that the threat actor was initially hosting his assets on GoDaddy platform. At one point, he moved it to a host sailor. Who is host sailor? It's a company registered in Arabic Emirates. Termicro in 2016 actually investigated this particular hosting provider in relation to some of criminal activities. But if we look around simply Googling email message archives, we can also see that this hosting provider has been having relatively poor reputation with kind of resources that it is allowing to host on its machines. And as we mentioned before, this hosting provider also uses the same cross-national boundary pattern as we've seen with other bulletproof hosting providers. For example, we can see that the company is registered in United Arab Emirates. However, the machines which were used to provide hosting services for the MagiCard, one of the MagiCard activities, were based in Romania. We can also examine another MagiCard related domain name and we can see that at one point it also moved from GoDaddy hosting to HostSizer hosting provider. Uh, one of the other hosting providers that it was using called Server GSC Network had actually a very interesting information in its who is details. It looks like they've been receiving so many abuse requests that even in who is request to put. If you're having trouble with this IP address or domain name, please contact us at this particular email address. Notably, the same IP address that was used by one of the MagiCard hosts at one period of time was also hosting a domain name called bulletproof. Su. If you look into some of the other Megacard domain names, we can also identify other hosting providers which could potentially provide bulletproof like services. For example, Vulture. And if you Google around for Vulture, we can actually see that this hosting provider also had records of hosting illegal content. For example, content that was violating the DMCA. If you continue exploring the MagiCard infrastructure, 
we can continue to identify other hosting providers, which seem to be keen on providing services to criminals. And Wallstream, in this case, was also one of them. And we are not, not the first researchers to identify potentially so suspicious activity with this hosting provider. As you see, they were also mentioned on Twitter before by one of our fellow security researchers. Normal investigations include a lot of indicators, but we try to do some research how you can help your investigations with visuals to see the bigger picture. And we figured out that there are a lot of options and a lot of use of slices which can be used to do this. For this case study, we used a list of underground forums, well-known underground forums, and investigated how they hosted over the time. So underground forum, it's an asset underground hosting because uh, sometimes we have posts which are supposed to be taken down. Sometimes it's exposed sensitive information which is published on the forums and so on. So let's see what we have. So uh, first of all, we try to use geolocation information and use it uh, passive DNS databases to get locations of the forums over the time. And on this picture, you can see which IP addresses has been used by underground forums in the first quarter of 2020. We can see two big clusters in Europe and United States and several other spots which are between South and uh, North America, which are normally related to offshore locations and some spots in Asia. One of the example is a black service. So that's how the front page looks like. And, and if you look how this asset has been hosted, we will get this picture. So what we map here, actually it's three dimensions. On the X axis, you can see a year. On the Y axis, you can see the country of location. And the bigger the circle is, the more days these assets were in particular country. So we can see a lot of small circles, but one big one. And this big one means uh, what this asset hosted over one year in one country at this period of time. As we mentioned before, there are many hour slices. So here we made another interesting slice, which often helps us to determine the hosting pattern. On X axis, you can see a number of IP addresses, which was used in particular autonomous system. And autonomous system names are on the Y axis. The size of the circle again means how many days this asset was in particular autonomous system. We can see at autonomous system uh, of Selectel, particular asset had over 20 IP addresses and spent over 200 days. And we see that in many other autonomous systems, the number of IP addresses was just one and systems survive it just several days a week, so not so long. We made another slice and zoom in to the particular year 2018. On X axis, you can see a month of year 2018. On Y axis, you can see a name of autonomous system. And uh, the size of the circle again means how many days asset was in particular autonomous system. We can see that over the time system uh, moved from Alibaba and uh, several autonomous systems can have similar name. So it can even move from one country to another, for example, but use the same service provider. And again, in some places, the system uh, survived longer time but uh, in majority of cases, uh, asset was unable to stay on the same spot, on the same IP address for a long time. Hosting on Onion sites has been also one of the popular means of putting an illegal content on the internet. We've seen multiple threat actors using Onion sites for both their customer-facing portals and their internal systems, such as their internal Java chat servers or other platforms. So let's look a little bit more at the Onion sites. To start off with, where do you buy Onion sites? There are 
service providers which sell onion sites. They sell onion sites was interesting uh, and easy to remember onion names. And they list prices, which I believe are quite affordable. The price that you see on the screen are given in rubles, so you could calculate it. 80 rubles, one US dollar. We believe those are quite affordable prices. Some of the onion hosting provision services, they will also host an onion site for you. So they will provide you an onion domain name and they will provide you a hosting inside the cloud. Many bulletproof hosters also are willing to host on onion sites. We conducted a short survey and defined real IP addresses of some of those sites. Host was an onion site. It should be noted that it's definitely not possible to identify location of onion sites in all cases. And normally only when attackers have made some fundamental mistakes in their setup. Only then we are able to see the actual IP addresses where they host their assets. Uh, in this particular case, we did this by searching for onion domain names patterns with the metadata of the systems. Uh, including banner names and SSL certificates from our telemetry. For example, Apple Market used to be known on HCTB25PQXEWN4.VRI.Onion site is on IP address 104.248.1.2.1.5.2. This IP address belongs to a very legit uh, hosting provider called DigitalOcean. On this picture, you can see a number of IP addresses which were exposed and related to onion sites where their location. Fast look hosting is not a very novel anymore. We discussed fast looks hosting in our paper in 2015. However, as a means of hosting provision, Fast food hosting services have evolved since last time we talked about them. So we believe it's also interesting to briefly cover them as well. On this forum post, we can see a seller offering services based on the fast flops infrastructure. Price range from $30 for a VPS a year to a bulletproof server with no phishing allowed for $10 a month. The person advertises that his machines are based in Iran and Romania, which means that probably they would not be that easy to be acquired by law enforcement. That's probably his internal message. And you can see that fast flux in comparison to a normal VPS service cost at least three times more. Traditional or the old school way is to host fast flux services and botnets. However, we've seen many of the bulletproof hosting providers to start provisioning their own infrastructure for fast flux services. How would you identify fast flux when you look at a domain? In our practical experience, one of the common things is to look at some of the details which were set by the domain owner when they configured DNS. Unusually short refresh details such as like refresh detail of 480 instead of 1,800 or expiration details to, of like 180 or even less could potentially signify that this domain could be based on fast flux infrastructure. But you have to be very careful with this because that's not always the case. There are legitimate reasons to use short details, for example, for load balancing. For big sites, it's quite normal to have details which are not much recommended details and way shorter. Let's look into fast flux hosted domains within the present few years. We investigated hosting of forums and found pretty interesting pattern. For this particular forum called Skyfraud, we found a huge spike of autonomous systems used it in 2016, and we decided to investigate because this pattern was very different comparing to patterns of 2015, 2017, and 2018 in this case. On the left side, you can see a long line of autonomous systems when the main name for Skyfraud 4 was hosted on fast infrastructure. In comparison, on the right side, 
you can see the same domain hosted on non-fast-fast infrastructure. You can see significant difference in the pattern where the main name is hosted across a number of IP addresses and number of occurrences when we've seen this domain name pointing those IP addresses is relatively evenly distributed. However, if it's using a non-fast flux infrastructure, we can see that the main name was jumping from one autonomous system to another and spent significant amount of time within particular autonomous system. Most of the fast flux infrastructure. So let's zoom in at the scale of days at this particular time in September 2016. We see a very interesting picture of the hosting situation for this domain name that was going on for a period of roughly nine days as we see on this diagram. The domain name for Sky Platform was evenly moving between a large number of autonomous systems and IP addresses and it did not spend a lot of time on each of them at all. This is a very common picture that you would see for a fast flux hosted infrastructure. There was over 300 different autonomous systems in total which were used by this forum during just nine days of September 2016. By analyzing internal telemetry and uh, forum messages, we were able to determine particular life cycle of monetization of compromised assets like servers. Here you can see a simple diagram from takeover of an asset to compromise detected. And between those two stages, asset goes through different types of monetization. In some cases, this could be categorization of asset. If a big corporation or bank, the monetization paths are different comparing to compromised home computer or small server of startup. But anyhow, we can understand what kind of actions were done by criminals and how incident response team reacted to this action. If compromise detected right after takeover, it's a really good incident response. But if you are seeing a coin miner on your server and you think, oh, just a coin miner. But the Finnish coin miner is used between the stages to monetize asset before it was resolved for the next stage of monetization. This could be exfiltration of information by one group, industrial espionage-like style, when asset could be used, for example, as a proxy. And when, probably, this, this asset could be encrypted and the owner of the infrastructure will be extorted with ransomware. All the stages so were typical criminal paths and the paths were raising stakes for the compromise. For example, asset could be resold to APT actor. In this case, attack will be investigated and probably attributed to the criminal group according to the TTPs which groups use it during compromise. But APT actor will be able to commit the activities we need, for example, to industrial espionage. And even if asset monetized by criminals, this asset could be traveled from one hand to another several rounds. And uh, normally the last stage of monetization, well, on all information stolen, maybe system is already on the IP block list and so on. It's a ransomware attack. And the ransomware attack, it's a type of attack, which is pretty visible for infrastructure owner. And this breach or attack will be definitely detected at this stage. Let's see a short example of this. Parts of the life cycle could actually be observed on some of the cybercrime forums as well. For example, this particular case we came across a few days ago is very illustrative. A threat actor initially gained access to an electronic manufacturer and he was attempting to sell access to this network and he's been trying to sell it for almost a week when he suddenly realized that he does not have customers trying to buy this. In addition to that, he realized that some people identified the actual compromise organization and notified them. Once he realized that organization identified the breach, he decided to play another game and tried to sell the data. He put the price of 500,000 US dollars 
and he thinks that's a reasonable price for the data that he obtained. He was giving a strong reason to the target organization to buy this data. He uploaded the data to a mega website, was encrypted with a password, and he was threatening the target organization that he will post password to this archive if the target organization is not paying the ransom. When the time was up, he actually did post the password to the archive that he had previously posted on the website. This is a case where attempt to sell access to a particular organization, like admin access to to branch offices as actor climate, was not successful. But if it was successful, buyers might be able to monetize this and impact will be different. So when you investigate bulletproof hosters, you may come across a need of visualizing and pivoting through the indicators. In this example, we would like to demonstrate how we use one of the tools that should be available to you if you are a user of Virus Total Intelligence Service. It's called Virus Total Graph. Using Virus Total Graph, you should be able to organize your indicators and you should be able to pivot through them in a quick and convenient way using Virus Total data set as a lookup data set for your correlation. Of course, you could also add your additional indicators by hand as well. In this example, we were investigating the same activity as we mentioned before, MagiCard, and we were pivoting from IP addresses to ASN hosting providers. So we could correlate IP addresses which were hosted at the same infrastructure. The same way, once you cross-reference your IP addresses to ASNs, you can start linking them together and putting them as a component that could potentially belong to the same bulletproof hoster. And of course, once you identify suspicious or potentially malicious ASNs, you can start linking them to other bad IP addresses to identify other malicious activities or other threat actors that might be using even the same bulletproof hoster for hosting their infrastructure. And of course, if we try to dig down into the actual providers of those services, we could see the reasons why that particular hosting provider was selected to host this particular content. Usually, the main reason is because the absurd activity actually fits within the allowed usage restrictions on that particular hosting provider. It's also possible to use other public knowledge bases to gain additional information on particular ASNs. For example, here we are looking into Lizer Holding BV and this organization has some risk of hosting potentially fraudulent content. It's also possible to uncover the remaining infrastructure of particular thread hoster. Once you have the URLs, you can pivot them to IP addresses. IP addresses can pivot you to additional URLs, which were seen on virus total. URLs could be linked to samples or pieces of JavaScript code that was downloaded from the URLs and so on. And you can continue your investigation until you build a relatively complete picture. The next case study related to security mechanism of underground infrastructures. Here we will see some interesting cases related to scraping protection of underground forums, which we saw during our research. Scraping protection helps to protect particular assets from automated indexing of assets, and underground forums are a pretty sensitive source of the information. That's why owners deploy this kind of security mechanism. For example, on this forum, Without authorization, it was possible to see just 10 pages, and after that, forum required to log in. Other forums deploy time-based restrictions. For example, if it's necessary to perform a search on the forum, before you're able to make another search, you should wait, in this case, 10 seconds, but in other forums, you can solve a captcha. So the thing with the captcha is pretty interesting, and it's well-known mechanism which protects from bots and scraping. But what the problem is, criminals are able to solve captures and where services available for capture solving, which could be a hired humans who solve capture manually, or what could be tools which deploy AI to solve captures. But criminals come up with their version of capture. It's a question that requires knowledge of 
technical skills like system administration of Unix machines or cultural background. The example of capture is on the screen. What is the number of criminal code article related to fraud, for example? Our questions related to local culture and Google Translate in this case doesn't work. So for example, here we can see a strange question, how many codes known and the foreigner will be unable to solve this kind of captcha anyhow. Because in original question, it was how many codes were in the well-known song. And every Russian kid knows it's a song called 33 codes. So local native speaker can solve this capture immediately. And for foreigner, it will take really a lot of time to solve this kind of capture. So that's how underground actors protect their assets from non-native speakers, for example. So among other protection mechanisms that we've seen, also provision of services which allow users to buy anonymous private workspace inside Darknet or Tor network. So here on this advertisement, we can see the seller offering a workspace that is suitable for any sort of activities, obviously including criminal activities. And he and he dives into particular features which are being provisioned if you buy the service from. And there's a protection mechanism that we've seen being provisioned on the forums was actually a physical removal or, or particular components from your device. For example, if you're concerned that your mobile phone could be compromised and you could be spied on and you only use your mobile phone for texting, you could physically remove camera and microphone. In this case, if your phone is compromised by a known party or a law enforcement, they would not be able to record any voice communication uh, on this phone because microphone is not present on the device. And the service provider physically removes those components from your device and for a fee, obviously, and sends you back the device and the removed components separately. So future of hosting. So it's transition to the cloud technologies because in the clouds, criminals can move assets faster, even between the countries, so crossing different jurisdictions, which harden life of law enforcement. Another thing is use of satellite and alternative networks by criminals. For satellite networks, it's really hard to determine a physical location of the receiver of the satellite signal. And the deferred direction is a move to IIoT equipment for hosting. Because IoT and IoT equipment have limited capabilities comparing to computers and smartphones for forensics. It's more perfect anti-forensic devices where get rarely updated. And uh, that means it's lower chance that compromise or misuse of the device will be detected. As a conclusion, we'd like to make a quick summary. We've seen that bulletproof hosting services are tailored to meet different needs of different customers and variety of the customers from the cheap, low cost, affordable bulletproof hosting that only lives for a short period of time to dedicated servers and hosting in dark web. We've seen that criminals being creative with provision of the services as always, and we also see that criminals are active adapters of new technologies. And hopefully you enjoyed our presentation. Hope you get some ideas and learn something new and that this could be used in your individual or personal investigations. With this, we are done. Thank you very much. Yep. I'd like to thank you for attending our session. We have hopefully a few minutes for questions and answers. Feel free to comment, post them. We'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoy our session. Thank you. Bye-bye.